Good morning from the First Baptist Church of Bullhead City, Arizona. Nice to see you today. Nice to see you folks on YouTube. Okay, I can't really see you folks on YouTube, but it's, I'm, we're glad you're there. Uh, we're going to start this service today with an acknowledgement of a birthday. We like to acknowledge our members who are having birthdays. And even though he wasn't able to come today, at least not so far, Robert Salazar's having a birthday today. And I know they watch the videos too. So sing with me. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Anyway, we're going to start the, the service with the usual word of prayer and a song, so if you would stand with me, we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for every person in this room today. We give you thanks for the fact that you can reach down and, and interface with us. You can reach us. You've, you've sent your son with a message, Father, and you've reached us because we are that important to you. I don't understand why all the time. Because I am not worthy of your attention, Father, but we know that, that uh, Jesus made a huge sacrifice for us, and uh, all we need to do is accept the gift of salvation, and, and uh, we will spend eternity in your house, Father. So we come to your house today uh, honored and, and uh, just in awe of your, of your power and your glory, and Father, we worship you and praise you because you are worthy of our praise. We thank you for all you do for us today. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We have come into his house today. Guys, he's got a gun. <laughs> <laughs> and it's your 
your anniversary. So the church wants to do what you normally do for us. Would you hit it, please, my famous piano player? Happy anniversary. Tuesday night, Life of Paul. We're having the, uh, the prayer meeting on Wednesday at 6 o'clock. Um, you know, corporate prayer and a few songs played by an unknown guitar player. And then uh, Thursday morning, 9.30, the ladies all meet, have a little coffee and a gab session and study the book Jesus Calling, I think it is. And uh, so that's a fun thing. Now, a couple of special things this week. Uh, first off, um, the ladies are going to have a retreat. Uh, now, Renee runs the thing on Tuesday night and does a fantastic job, I understand. And she has set up some kind of a more or less get, a beat the heat kind of retreat. Oh, I like that. <laughs> beat the heat retreat. You thought of that, didn't you? Yeah. And uh, so she's got some flyers here. And so see Renee. I'm not going to announce her phone number or anything because we're on the Internet here. But uh, she's got some flyers. It's a great thing on a Saturday, June the 12th for you ladies. It says uh, the Tuesday night Bible study group along with the support of Bullhead City Baptist Church is having its first Beat the Heat Women's Retreat. Oh, that's where I saw that. <laughs> Here on Saturday, June the 12th, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Seating is limited. If you'd like to attend, pick up a flyer or speak to Renee or Beth, but mostly Renee. But uh, anyway, we want you guys to participate. Uh, there's going to be some food served. Uh, the uh, church is going to be picking up uh, the bill for the catering. Yes. And uh, so it's going to be uh, from Agave's Mexican, I do believe. Right, so far, playing goes. And I love their food, they're really good. So, see Renee, she's in the red right there, and we'll keep reminding you about that. Of course, the other announcement is Tuesday morning we're loading boxes for the Philippines, and Wednesday we'll ship them. So, if you uh, got some time Tuesday morning, about eight o'clock ish, uh, just come on, come on down to the church and uh, help shove some stuff into the boxes, and then somebody sits on them while we run tape around the edges of it. <laughs> those boxes are full on Tuesday mornings. 150 pounds going to the Philippines. Well, anyway, that's uh, all the announcements I have, but we're going to, um, we're going to do the, huh? We already sang it about Robert's birthday. Yeah, you were. We, we sang that online, right? Uh, when we, after we started, Robert said it was done? Yes, we did. Okay, while well, you were running around doing your little errands, I don't know how you are. Okay, yes, uh, we uh, we sang about Robert Salazar's birthday, so that's all good. And then we have some mission moment pictures too from uh, the Philippines. We have two pictures and a video that they sent us. There is a little bit of audio problem with the with the video because it's the audio is is high and then it dwindles down real low and goes high and then it goes low. But at least you can see what's going on. Now, if you look at this picture right here, you see that. This is a very high view, you know, looking out, and that's where uh, Zoe, I think it is, Pastor Zoe is up there, and uh, they take the word of God up to those folks, the indigenous folks that live up there in the mountains. And I don't see a single power line up there. <laughs> but uh, anyway, those folks uh, live up there, and uh, that's, uh, that's where our support goes, to places like that. There is one other still picture we have, and those are the people who are receiving our support as well. They get coloring books and clothing, and if you have 
uh, an opportunity to buy a children's clothing or know someone who needs to get rid of some stuff or kids that age, shoes and clothes are very, uh, very much needed. And so that's uh, among the things that we put in the boxes. And of course, every box we send has Bibles in it too. So that's all good. Now, we do have a video of, uh, of the children celebrating, worshiping, singing. We're going to flash that up here. Beth has to get on another uh, file to do that. It'll be up in just a second. And here comes the video. When we send them funds and things like we send them guys, we have a, a deal with a couple pawn shops in Vegas where I trade in a bunch of old phones and we can clear them totally, don't worry about that. A lot of times we clear them for a better, we, we'll trade a bunch of them for a couple of good quality phones. And when you see the video sometimes, it's because some of them have the good quality phones that we sent and some of them don't. So keep that in mind when you get ready to throw those little flip phones out and stuff, throw them in the back. We can, we can take a bunch of them and trade them for one good phone and then we get better video. Yeah. We've got our volume turned up about as much as we can, and yeah. if we do it anymore, all you get is home. So uh, they're singing and, and uh, celebrating up there. Like Bob said, you don't see any electricity around there, you know, because there is none. So a lot of times when we ask for the batteries and things like that, that's why the battery operator lanterns and things, you know, make a big difference up there south. So. Yeah, very little. Yeah, uh, little LED lights and uh, and batteries, AA batteries especially are handy. Those go a long way up there because up there when it's dark, it's real dark. So. Anyway, that's uh, some of the things we like to send. Stuff for the kids and, and uh, batteries, Bibles, tools. Yeah, always tools because tools are good. is always building another prayer kayak on the side of the road or building a church somewhere. <laughs> it's they just, all, every time they turn around, they're building it. You know, so hand saws and hammers and things make a big difference. Yep. So we can be a blessing to them and they can be a blessing to us because we know that it is more blessed to give through than to receive and we are giving what we can. Uh, out of our abundance, so we need to count our blessings. And that leads us right into another song, which is Count Your Blessings. Yes. So uh, let's get ready to sing this one right here. I show that in the zero. Okay, so it's like a... When a poem like still was you are ten. Thank you. 
we are very blessed. Yes. Because we have a friend in Jesus. Oh, yeah. Got a minus three there. Guess what? If you're able, would you stand up for Jesus? You don't have to, but if you're able to do that, it'd be great. <clears throat> uh, this is a minus one, I show. And it'll be like.
Anyway, have a seat, folks. We're going to uh, let Pastor Roy take the stage up here now so uh, he can get his message to you. It's going to be a very good message today. I've seen it. Something to take to heart. Day. It's a wonderful day. Yes. Always ready to start out the day. Talking to the Lord, jumping up in the morning and smiling. We do that because we know when all seems wrong, God's got us. This week we're going to look at James 1 because it talks about when things go wrong in there. I was out, got a little warm up here. Last week was Mother's Day and we talked about how females have so much wisdom imparted and that they're naturally mothers. They're naturally mothers because they go to God about everything. And if you don't think they do, you remember when you were a little kid and you came up and said, I did this, and your mom said, oh God. <laughs> Immediately, she knew where to go. God. You know, we, we talk about it and laugh about it some, but you know, someone this week, noticed the frogs and asked me, why do we have frogs in the flower garden? I said, the frog is in the perfect place at church. And, you know, the timing is always excellent, God. It's like, I'm, you know, I get my magazine, it's got frogs, and it's Arizona. I have to pull that out. It's not the current one, but it was one I happened to see in Wait a minute. So everything fits. But we think about the frog, and the frog is at home in church because it reminds us F-R-O-G forever rely on God. Amen? Amen? Forever rely on Him. That's mother's secrets. That's one of their secrets. They're always relying on God. They're never relying on themselves. They rely on God. And we need to learn to do that. On Wednesday, God punctuated His will again when a powerful prayer warrior church spoke up about how many people were broken hearted. I took that to heart, and I, and I prayed about it. And when we pray for people and pastors and things to come about, we need to remember that when people get brokenhearted, when they're down in their spirit, people can't bring them back up. You can try. You might be able to get them to smile or laugh or something, but we really can't bring them back up the way they need to be. Only God can do that, amen? Amen. God can do it every single time. So we're going to look at James 1 and see what it says about troubles and times of trouble and how we deal with that. Because, folks, I have never seen more troubled times than right now. Everyone, you can't even, I watched a sporting event yesterday and it turned into a political discussion. And I, I just, I muted it. That's a good thing about a mute button. <laughs> yeah. And I could watch the horses run because I didn't want to hear it. Yeah. You know? It's just ridiculous. Anybody can turn anything against someone. Anybody can turn anything into a political argument. You know what? I don't care. Presidents, kings, queens can come and go. He rules the world, period. Yeah. James 1, 2, consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. And 3 says, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance, according to my 1828 trusty Webster's Dictionary, because it has biblical references. 
and it has definitions that I remember as a kid, not something that I find online that changes according to society. I can't remember what that's called. Okay, let's name it this. And then five people will call it that, and then 500 will call it that, and suddenly everyone's calling that, and no one knows what it really is. Huh? I remember working on cars or whatever as a kid, and someone would come in and who, who talk about working on cars or something, and it was a joke amongst the mechanics. Oh yeah, it was the conniving pin. And they just looked at you. Yeah, I, I know where that's at. You do? I don't know if there is one on the car. I'm probably sure there isn't. Whoa, no, I, I, I didn't hear you correctly. No. No. I didn't hear you correctly. Things change names according to what society thinks, guys. But you know what? It doesn't change. Perseverance, according to my 1828 Webster's, continuing in any enterprise to its finish, be it good or evil. Satan is constantly testing your faith as God allows him to. People said, well, why would God allow that? It's the only way God can test your obedience. Amen. And let's go back and look at our mothers again, because our mothers, they might have said, what if your father comes home? But our mothers were the first ones really to test their obedience. You know? I wish I could talk to Bob's mom. Leave the apple pie on the counter alone. In the back of her mind, she's thinking, I already know what's going to happen. She's watching the second hand sweep on her watch. 16 seconds, he's in there. He's got the fork. What are you doing? Already knows what you're doing. Already knows what you're doing. God tests us by allowing Satan to test us. But he's testing our obedience. And we are disobedient children, are we not? Yes, we are. The definition of perseverance goes on. And I really like this. Because I told you to have biblical references. It says continuing in a state of grace to a state of glory. Perseverance. That's my trusty 1828 dictionary. I love it. You won't find biblical references in dictionaries today. It might offend someone. Ooh, I'm so sensitive. I'm a little flower. Oh, well. Wake up and smell the roses, guys, because guess what? You ain't getting a whole lot of roses anymore. We're getting a whole lot of thorns, aren't we? I'm telling you, we live in a garden of thorns. People talk about paradise. We live in a garden of thorns. But God, God knows what we're living through. He knows what we're dealing with. And he's got it, guys. He's got it. And don't put your trust in a politician or, or in the media. <laughs> I'm glad someone laughed before I did because I was about to. I saw it on the news. There is no more news. You know? It used to be there was an old fellow, whatever, when I grew up. His name was Jim Kincaid. I'll never forget him. He had been a, a big time news reporter. And, and by the time I grew up, he was, he was getting older. And he would do an editorial. But he would tell you it was an editorial in his opinion. Mm -hmm. Today, anytime, you know, the five o'clock news hour comes on, you know you're going to get rhetoric and editorial. Mm -hmm. huh? I always wanted to be able to call it live while they're taping the show or doing it live and saying, I didn't ask for your opinion. Mm -hmm. Call me Jack Webb, just the facts, ma'am. Uh huh? Just the facts, that's all I want. You can't get them anymore. Not by watching the TV. And then people will say, I saw it on the internet. I don't, I don't even want to tell you some of the things I've seen on the internet. It's like, how is that possible? And you know, I mean, common sense tells you it's not possible. Ah, that's the other lacking thing. So that's why, that's why in today's world more than ever, we need to develop perseverance. We need to persevere. We need to stay the path. We need to keep to the straight and narrow. Because if you don't think the devil is not out there laughing, when he watched, he said, hey, my minions are working. He's watching the news and watching these athletes and watching all this ridiculous stuff going on in the world. And he's jumping up and down. Yeah. 
It's the same party time. But we know how this battle ends, guys. We know how the story ends. Satan doesn't get the party forever. And it's warm up here this morning, but it's going to be a whole lot warmer down there, guys. I promise you. Develop your perseverance. Stick to the road God led you to. Amen? Amen. The manner of life, his word, is what's important. Not what you ate this morning. It's not what's on the menu at McDonald's. It's not what you're thinking about you know, when you go in the cookie store or the chocolate store. I see smiles now, I know. Those things are temporary. Those things are all temporary. But we live in a world of instant gratification. It does not teach people to persevere. Remind me of a bunch of six-year-old kids. I don't want it and I want it now. Yeah. Yep. You see them in, you see kids in stores doing it. You see them in restaurants and things doing it, yelling and screaming at their parents, like six-year-old kids. And then you turn on, you know, the congressional channel. And there they are again, except they're 60 and 70, you know. <laughs> and they're yelling and screaming at each other. Yeah. And it's like Where's my paddle? Corporal punishment. You know? I'm telling you, if they would let me go to Washington, D.C. and line them up right along the fence and just let me walk down there, my arm wouldn't get tired. Oh, 500, not a problem. You, know? you straighten up back right. Because that's what you're acting like. They're not concerned with running the country. They're concerned with acting like little children. I'm not getting my way. Like the little kid in the floor, spinning circles in a grocery store. Uh, you know? Oh yeah, I would have done that, sure. Uh, you know? I would have set out for a month. <laughs> but there is none, because there is no perseverance in God. Your dictionaries are polluted. The media is polluted. Life is polluted. I'm seeing things on TV now that I never thought I'd see, and I never wanted to see. I saw a movie the other day that was PG-13. I thought, okay, Colonel God's 13, this won't be bad. It had full frontal nudity, I was like, oh, the standards continue to drop, folks. And they continue to put God down. Well, God's not doing this, God's not doing this. The God we trust was once more than a motto on a coin and on our money. But it's losing its impact in this nation. And we got people saying that's okay. No. Testing of your faith. That's allowed by God. He allows Satan to do it. Develops perseverance. And we need perseverance in our life. We need to stay the path. Why? Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Five says. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. Folks, we don't know it all. We're not nearly as smart as we think we are. Okay? But if we go to God, he'll give us the wisdom. He'll give us the knowledge. He'll give us the understanding. He'll give us the love to deal with that situation. I saw my friend stand up here this morning celebrating 29 years of marriage. I can't even begin to understand the amount of understanding that was necessary for 29 years. Yeah. Telling you. But I know one thing about that couple, that when they got into situations like that, they went to God, amen? amen. And that's what it takes. God doesn't find fault in you. If he did, every time I looked up, he would look down at me and say, again? Yeah. Uh -huh. Again, you need something again? You're like a sponge. You're always soaking up everything. Yep. Why do you need something again? I'm just a needy child. Yeah. He loves me anyway. He can put up with me. He'll put up with all of you. No problem. I guarantee it. Not a problem at all. When you lack wisdom and you go to God, 
respect what he tells you. That's a big problem with people when they pray. Pour out your heart. Remember God answers prayer. Act on that prayer. Don't sit around and say, well, this is not quite what I thought it was going to be. Yield to God's wisdom. P-R-A-Y. You can pour out your heart, realize the answer is prayer, and you can act, but you've got to act according to what he told you. Amen? Amen. But people won't. They'll be like, well, God hasn't answered my prayer. No, actually, God hasn't answered your prayer the way you wanted it answered. I encounter that occasionally in counseling people and talking to them. And some of the things they'll ask you, you will not believe. I can't tell you that. That's contrary to the Bible. I tell people all the time, we offer biblical counseling only in this church. We will not offer Christian counseling because Christian counseling may bring up something that is contrary to the Bible. If it's biblical counseling, it means it's going to come directly out of that book. If it's not in that book, I'm not going to tell you. Amen? Amen. Period. I'm not qualified to do that. I'm not qualified to be up here, but it gives me the words. So. Uh, but you've got to go by that. He will not find fault in you. If he finds fault in people, I'm telling you, this world would be in more trouble than what it's in. The bottom line to it all is that when we say pray, 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 church leadership is always discussing and praying about how to improve prayer lives. Our Wednesday night attendance could improve. We have room for you. We don't have the strength. Our bodies are actually quite frail. We don't have the knowledge. For all we know, we actually know nothing. We don't have the wisdom to apply the knowledge after we get it. You ever seen something and thought, how in the world did that person think? I had it this week. I have a sign on my fence because one part, I said, my house is on a corner. One part of my house faces a main road. If you put a package there, it is probably going to get taken before I get it. So I have a sign there, and it says FedEx and Amazon and USPS and every UPS and everybody. I mean, it's a pretty good size sign. It says, please come around to the front of the house to deliver packages. Everybody normally honors that sign. This week, apparently, FedEx had a new driver. He set two small packages right behind the sign. Oh, I am not exaggerating. I took a picture and sent it to FedEx, because I know the people up at FedEx. And I took a picture up in Golden Bell and sent it to them. And you do not want to hear what the guy was saying in the background. I'm telling you. He was like, are you? Are you? And I said, tell me this is a joke. He said, I said, it's not. What kind of reasoning and thinking do you have to do to do something like that? I said, we have no common sense. Believe me, folks, a lot of people out there have no common sense. And don't even get me started on the drivers. I mean, I saw one the other day go the wrong way down the road for about 300 yards. I don't know. I don't know, 95, the wrong side of the road so that he could duck into another driver about 300 yards. And I was like, and he didn't need a car. And I was like, buddy, God's watching over you. Yeah. He drove down the wrong side of the highway for about 300 yards. Oh. And I was just, I'm <laughs> just looking at him like, God watches over us. He gives to us generously. He protects us. But come on, guys. You to him. He's smarter than we are. Amen? Amen. He's a whole lot more. More people in here than that. Amen? Amen. Yeah. He's smarter than we are. He'll give you the knowledge that you need. He gives you everything that you need. You know? I said I wasn't going to talk about traffic, but I got to, Bob, because I left here the other day on my motorcycle, and I went out on the Rainbow Road, and there was a big truck so close to me you could barely, I mean, I could barely see the front of it. And then I kept moving my head, and I realized it was a Bullhead City fire truck. Oh. Uh -oh. And he didn't have the lights on, and he didn't have the siren on, and he's... 10 foot away from me. So when he stopped up at the stop sign, he pulled up alongside me like they do. And I told him, one day, can I help you? 
And I said, yeah, I would have needed help if I'd have had to stop short because you would have ran over me. <laughs> and he just looked at me like, I said, yeah, have a nice day. God bless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I thought, think about that for a minute. If you're equipped, think about that for a minute. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's not, I mean, you know, they don't think at all. You know? There was no way in the world he could. I mean, he would have ran right over me with that fire truck. You know? I've been rolling around for the rest of my life. I got a dual suspension now, Bob. Because I would have been part of that motorcycle. It's ridiculous. Let God run your life. Let go of the burdens and the cares. Because he can handle it better than you can. We've all experienced that too. You ever see somebody doing something and <laughs> at some point you're dead on your back because you're like, you're going to hurt yourself in a minute. Now your wives can identify with this. Honey, can I hold that for you? If you, no. <laughs> I told you that was going to happen. Let God. God knows it's going to happen too. Ouch. If you don't think God, yeah, ouch. If you don't think God doesn't have a sense of humor, I know sometimes he looks down at me and says, this is not going to end well, but it's going to be amusing. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, at least I made him smile. <laughs> One six. But when he asked, must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. How many of you in here know a person like this? A doubting Thomas or a doubting Thomasina? How many of you? No matter how many facts you lay in front of them, I can look at this person and say, the Bible is open. That's all I have to say. Well, no, it's partially open. Or it's, I mean, you know, I'm telling you, there are people who will argue with you about anything. If you pray for something and he answers, believe he's going to answer prayer. If you don't believe and you don't have faith, guess what's going to happen? One seven. The man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. You're not going to get what you ask for. Why? Because you didn't believe. You don't have faith. The Holy Spirit is not in you. If the Holy Spirit is in you and you call on God, God answers prayer. Amen? Amen. Every time according to His will, not yours, because His will is better for you. Amen. Much better for you. We will fight that every time. Eight goes on to say, he is a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. If you don't have a stable relationship with Christ, you don't have a stable relationship, period. In anything you do, in any person you interact with, you probably don't even have a stable relationship with your dog, and you might get bit. <laughs> I'm telling you. Stability comes from your relationship with God. Amen? Amen. Amen? It makes you feel like you can do anything because you can according to his will. You can as long as you are doing what he wants you to do. You will not fail. Nothing is impossible with my God. Amen? Amen. Nothing. But if you are double-minded and you are blown around like the wind and you say, God doesn't answer my prayers and you encounter someone like me, I'm probably going to look at you and say, I wonder why. Huh? Where's your faith? Yeah, I'm not going to coddle you. I'm not, I'm not here to tickle your ear. Sorry. Not really. I don't, want you, I don't want you to make that mistake. I don't want you to go to hell. I want to see you in heaven. I've told you many, many times 
that when you get to heaven, you'll be surprised by some of the people you see. You will. Because we tend to think, well, I don't know about that person. But you're going to be more surprised by the people you don't see. Yeah. It might be some people that you think, that's a really good person, and they do really good things all the time. Why are they not here? Because they didn't have a relationship with God. Amen? Amen. That had that relationship with God, they wouldn't have been double-minded. The Holy Spirit, who is our advocate and our protector and our comforter, would have been strong in their hearts, and they would have been strong in their faith, and you would be seeing them. If you don't see them, it's because it wasn't there, folks. And you can't change that. I told you, I think years ago, when I first got here, I had a lady call me, and she wanted me to pray for her grandson. I said, sure. And she, I said, you know, what's going on with well, this and this and this and this? And he's dead. I said, uh, excuse me? And I didn't want to make her feel bad, and I tried to skirt the issue, but finally I just said, come on, oh, man. There's nothing I can do for your grandson. There's nothing you can do. I said, the only thing we can do is hope that in that final second before he died, he gave his soul to Christ. Oh, no, Pastor. He was cussing like a poly parrot. <laughs> I said, well, she said, I'll never forget it. And I said, then, I'm sorry. There's nothing we can do. You can't pray your friend into heaven after they die, but you can tap your friend on the shoulder and say, hey, you know, let's go to church. Let's go to prayer on Wednesday night. Let's see what we can do to get you on firmer ground with God. And if they say, well, you're judging me? Better I judge you here and get you straight than not see you in heaven and know you're in hell. Amen? Amen. That's how much I love you. That's how much I care. Yes. Say that to them because it's true. If you care enough about someone, you will tell them the truth. Amen. If you fill them full of lies and they go to hell, then at some point you're going to think, Maybe I could have made a difference. Maybe you could have. Don't have that in your heart. No, you did everything you could. And they went to hell in spite of you. Because some people are going to do it. We're not going to save them all, guys. God, God told us over and over. We're not going to get them all. We don't save them anyway. But we try to divert them. You know? Try to push them in the right direction. You can lead a horse to water, guys. But you can't make them drink. You cannot do it. And that's sad many times in our life when we see that. We see someone and we're like, why can this person not see what I see? Well, normally the reason is Matthew 6, 24 tells us no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate one and love the other or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. In the same fashion, you can't serve God and power. You can't serve God and fame. You can't serve God in status or property. People will devote themselves to their property. All will be going in a blink of an eye, guys. What's more important then? <gasps> oops! That's a big oops. But I'm telling you, when you do that oops and you wind up in hell, I wish I had, I wish I had, I wish I had. But it's too late. I had a conversation this week and turned to poetry that had Christian overtones, and I discussed two poems with someone. One of them was Don't Go Gently Into That Good Night with Dylan Thomas, and the other one was Seed to the West by Norman Nicholson. Most people won't know this obscure Christian poet, yet I have attended funerals where the Thomas poem is read and revered. Hmm. Every time I, I hear it, I think, you know, Thomas, this poem is akin to a man saying, don't let anyone take the last possession you have, Dad, fight, rage against it. You know? So the last thing you have is you know, rage, rage against the night. I mean, you know, it's, it's like he's saying, don't die, Dad, keep fighting it. But read the poem by Norman Nicholson, and you'll find he looks forward to being blinded by a brighter light he calls the dazzle. Oh, yeah. I want to be dazzled, guys. This earth's not bright enough for me. You know? I want to be dazzled. I want to go see God. Amen? Amen. Yeah. And, I, I, and I, I see that at, at funerals quite frequently. And it's like, why are you reading that? That is not, you, you, you do understand that this is a person that wants to hold on to that life to the very last minute. We don't make that decision, guys. God does. And when he makes it, whether you're 20 or 30 or 15 months, 
for 50 years, that's it. It's over. Bob and I recently learned about a young pastor here in the area who passed away. He was a tremendous guy. He was in his 40s. COVID and diabetes. And we miss him. He was just a good man of God. But it was his time, amen? amen. God called him, and it was his time. I'm a little envious. He beat me there. It's true. We will hang on to all the things of this earth. And the thing that we try to hang on to at the end is life. I got news for you guys. Life is a journey. This is a 1960s Chevrolet here, okay? It's about wore out. This body's about wore out, okay? Anytime God wants to take my soul and leave this behind, like the song said, I'll fly away. I'm gone, guys. Baby trail, I'm gone. It's so, over. And uh, I miss you guys, but uh, we'll see you up there, okay? That's the way it is. Don't hold on to this life. I mean, you know, not worth it. You want to choose a couple more days here in this world? You want to give up your relationship with him for that? There are people who will. There are people who will do extreme things. You know, I know there are people who have been frozen. Uh, oh, yeah, they're, they're frozen and there's still uh, air conditioning, refrigeration, whatever you want to call it, pumped in there and keep their bodies alive until they realize how to fix whatever is wrong with them. Nope. Out of here! Now, period. We look at death as an end if we're unsure. And that's our fault, not God's. In all this talk of inclusion, people tend to forget God originated the idea. I love you all. I love you all. He includes you. He gives you the opportunity. If you don't take it, then that's not on him. That's on you guys. James 1.13 When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil. Nor does he tempt anyone. 14 But each one is tempted when, by his own evil desire, he is dragged away and enticed. And 15 says, then after desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Folks, God never tempts us. He offers us opportunity. When we get in situations that are bad, we need to go to him, and we need to consider it all joy because we are learning. Amen? Amen. We are maturing in Christ. If we choose not to mature in Christ, if we choose the devil, He's got hell in store for us. Yet we rant, rave against God even to a dying breath because like society nowadays, we don't want to say we are, ready guys, W-R-O-N-G. We are wrong. I was wrong to do that, Lord. I repent. That's why we have the mirror, guys. Remember, first get up in the morning. Walk in the bathroom, close the door, don't allow anything, not even your pet in the bathroom with you. Look in that mirror. First 30 seconds, 45 seconds, you might see that your, your makeup's a little smeared, especially if you left it on the night before. Get out of here, Bob. Or you might see that, or you might see whatever you got another age spot or something. But after that first minute, you begin to see what God sees because you begin to understand. I did not have to snap at that Walmart clerk. I did not have to cut my brother off on the phone. I did not have to hang up on my neighbor because we disagreed on politics. It's not that important. In the end, it's not going to be. You're giving in to sin, and that gives birth to death, a permanent death. <laughs> we don't want to be permanently dead. We have the gift of eternal life right at our fingertips. The painting on my wall in my office. It's God reaching out. He's reaching out to each and every one of you. He's reaching out to every one of you out there in YouTube land. You know, 
Take that hand, guys. Take it. Take it. It's offered freely. Doesn't cost anything. Don't choose the path of sin. We choose the path of sin because it's convenient. Look at God and say, I'm yours. Instead of saying, why me, Lord? Why did this happen to me? I look up sometimes and say, why me, Lord? I've never done anything to deserve you. And yet, you chose me. That's the way you need to look up to him and say things. You need to be thankful for the fact that he gives you what he gives you. And we do that through prayer. And we do that through our actions. And we do that through praise and worship. Amen? Amen. And we do that because he loves us so much. If he didn't love me, my life wouldn't be worth living. All the time. He gives and gives and gives and he's still giving you the opportunity to live forever with him in the book of Romans 15 13 may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit all our hope all our faith is in him and it's born of his love for us for it's in this world born of deceit and lies and the father of lies. And it's a path that leads straight to hell. Period. True joy comes only from God. It can't come from anywhere else. If you want instant gratification, go buy yourself a Reese's. If you want eternal love and joy, you better get a little closer to God. It's just that simple, guys. It's not complicated. We as humans tend to complicate things, overcomplicate. This is not a complicated situation. Take my hand. Let go. Let God. However you want to put it. You gotta go to him, guys. We gotta stop relying on our own knowledge and the world's knowledge and politicians and this one and that one and everyone who has the answer. I bet 20 times a week in that mailbox right in there, we get something that is the answer. This program will expand the size of your church. That's not my church, it's God's church. You started off wrong to begin with, buddy. This program will help you to reach out. God, not Roy, not Bob, not even the church. God is utilizing the church as a tool and reaching 7,700 miles around the world to the Philippines. But God's doing that, not me. And you know what? We don't even have a program, Bob. How, how on earth is that happening? Yeah. Ah, maybe this is the program. Maybe that's what they need. If you don't have that, you don't have true joy, and you want it, if you're sitting out here in this audience, if you're out in YouTube land, no matter where you are today, God's offering it. His hand's out there. And unlike Uncle Sam, who says, I want you, and yeah, God, I fell for that. <laughs> unlike Uncle Sam, some of the others in here too. I like Uncle Sam who says, I want you. God says, I want you. And he provides, amen. amen. He provides. So if you want to change your life, if you want that joy, if you want that blessed assurance, we're about to pray a little prayer. I want you to pray with me, and I want you to mean it. Your life will change forever. Shall we pray? Father God, search my heart. If there is anything, anyone, any belief, any alliance, any loyalty that is offensive in any way to you, remove it now. I'm tired of being fooled, lied to, and misled by Satan and his followers. Lord, give me the truth, the peace, and the joy that can only be found in you. 
take this poor broken life and make it whole. I accept that Jesus Christ died for my sins on the cross at Calvary. And as my sins are washed away by his blood, the gift of salvation became mine. I accept your gift. I accept your love. I ask you to come into my life. Remove the anger, hatred, mistrust, love of sin, and anything else that separates me from you. Take my burdens. Take me, Lord. I am yours. Amen. Amen. Folks, say that prayer. Mean it. Live according to it. And uh, you just might get to see what true joy is. You're going to be surprised. Bye bye. Roy, appreciate that. The book of James is a great book. It's very short, very easy to read, and it is absolutely full of wisdom. You know, especially when you're a little down and out and things are kind of coming against you. It says, "Consider it all joy." That's hard enough, but it's uh, it's got good advice in it. Well, we're going to close with a uh, a psalm and a word of prayer, as we usually do. So uh, I want to uh, uh, play this one because we need to surrender ourselves to the Lord. And this one's called, Have Thine Own Way, Lord. Have Thine Own Way.
your Holy Spirit. Father, we give you thanks in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 See you next week. Be careful out there.